All right. Thanks for coming. Uh, so we're going to talk today about protecting your site with automatic updates. I am Ted Bowman, Principal Software Engineer at Acquia. It's Drupal Acceleration Team. I'm the tech lead for the Automatic Updates Initiative. I worked on layout builder and settings tray previously. Uh, Ted Bow on Drupal.org. And Mastodon, maybe? Yeah, I think that's how you'd find me. Um, so the Starshot Initiative, um, we're slated to be part of that, the Automatic Updates Initiative module, and also Project Browser, which is built on top of um, our foundation. So exciting. Um, these are some of the people who've been helping out with the initiative later, lately. There's definitely been a lot of people, but um, it's been a lot of work as far as the actual module, libraries on GitHub, security reviews, um, infrastructure on the Drupal.org side. So, yep, just I'm sure there's people I'm missing, but just sort of uh, sort of a group effort across multiple teams and multiple parts of infrastructure uh, and security signing on Drupal.org. Um, so we aim to keep Drupal sites secure and hopefully make uh, Composer as painful as... <laughs> <laughs> painless as possible. I have a problem with my... I can either put my glasses on to read the slide or I can not have them to see you, so, you know. Problem of the age. Okay, um, so it is really for sites without um, the time or budget, uh, budget for um, complicated updates. Um, prefer to avoid the command line. And also it can be used for technical people hosting like a lot of Drupal sites. You could use our APIs for that. Um, and anybody basically who can't keep up or does, you know, finds it hard to keep up with Drupal security updates. Um, it's less useful if you have a really complicated development and deployment workflow um, in certain continuous integration setups. And often if you need um, you know, a, a review for every update to your site, obviously automatic is not going to work for you in that case. Um, so automatic updates, it consists of a couple, uh, an AP, uh, library module called Composer Stager, which handles our direct interaction with the Composer and moving code around. Package Manager, which is our sort of Composer API module inside Drupal. We have the Automatic Updates module and we have the Newly Stable Automatic Updates uh, Extensions module. And then there's Project Browser, which is built also on top of Composer Stager and Package Manager, but you find it on a different um, project on Drupal.org. But it's um, it's not technically a requirement, but if you want to do the actual Composer installs, you have to have the automatic updates module present. So for Drupal Core, um, automatic updates is um, slated to be in Drupal Core at some point, and also Project Browser. The extensions module, you know, probably sometime in the distant future, you know, we'll look at um, adding automatic or updates for contrib modules, but that's not on the near term uh, roadmap. And then, of course, pr Package Manager will also um, be there because it's our Composer API module. And then Composer Stager will live as an outside library that we'll depend on in core. Um, so things that have happened since Pittsburgh, or uh, we have a stable release of our sort of third generation of the automatic updates module. Uh, we have 300 sites about using it. and. Since we've made it stable, there, since I think December, there haven't been any user reported bugs. We, we've had, us developers have found things and fixed things in our testing, but nobody has come by and said, you hosed my site, or basically anything. And we have a sort of a continuous, not very, there's not really an up and down usage for the module, it's just sort of constant. So we're assuming that people aren't just installing it and then removing it that we see more fluctuation in the usage. Um, and we've had a security review sponsored by the Drupal Association through Cure 53. And so that did not find, uh, we you know, publicly put out the security issues um, because there were, there were more like inform, info level security things where you already had to have a significant level of compromise to your site for it to take advantage of any of the security exploits. Um, 
So that is sort of a big thing that has, is on our road to core, but hopefully also sort of a confidence builder for you using the contrib version of the site is that, um, you know, obviously we've been taking security into consideration from the very beginning of the module, but now we have outside, you know, an outside review of it from people who weren't involved in the development. Um, that's been done on the um, infrastructure side for Drupal.org, which we're not using yet because it's not ready for, for production, but also the code that will run in the, con that's running in the contrib module has been reviewed from an outside security firm. Um, so the automatic updates module is for providing updates to core only. It replaces the core UI, the core update UI, which has sort of like a old fashioned way of uh, updating via zip downloads, not composer aware. Um, it can do updates in the background. And again, it's built on top of package manager. And so we also ship another module called automatic updates extensions where it does update modules and themes. We don't provide background updates for, um, for modules and theme, mostly because it's really hard to guarantee the stability of an update. So we don't basically want to take on the burden of sort of, okay, something happened in the background, you updated 10 contrib sites and now your site is broken. Um, so that could be basically, if we get a lot of success for people updating uh, contrib, contrib modules and themes in the form that eventually maybe we would provide that. Um, and then package manager, it's included and there's no user interface. It basically manages temporary copies of your site where it makes a copy of your code base, performs composer operations, does some validation on it and then applies it back to your site. And so basically there's four phases. We create, we make a temporary copy, um, require, we run a composer command. In our case, it's composer require, but potentially you could run any sort of composer operation there. And then we apply the changes back to the site via rsync, and then eventually we destroy the temporary copy of your site. So sort of the important thing here is that in most of this, if anything goes wrong in the first two stages, your site is completely unaffected. So we try to make the last stage sort of do as little as possible and sort of be as dumb as it needs to be. We're not, there's nothing composer oriented in the last step. Um, so that with the last step, which is really like changing your site's code base is as simple as possible. Um, we have lots of validation at every step. Basically before you start, we wanna make sure you're in a good state as far as your composer project is valid. And then as we go, we uh, dispatch events that you can hook into if you need custom code to say prevent updates on certain circumstances or to fire your own processes either at the start of an update or after an update is applied. Um, so basically, again, we're trying to keep Drupal sites secure um, and it's mostly, so right now we're, the main module that is slated for core is only gonna update core itself, but in the contrib version, we do have a module that updates uh, modules and themes, and then we have the four phases, create, require, apply, and destroy. Um, so getting set up, you have to have a valid composer project. It's not, it doesn't do any sort of cleanup stage if you sort of didn't start with composer. I mean, you can have projects that are included in your site that are not, weren't, weren't required to be our composer, though it's not recommended. We have some validation steps to avoid you actually having those projects and then having them duplicated, put, put them in via composer and via another way. So we have minimal validation for if you kind of didn't make a, com a correct composer project at the beginning. And then we don't support uh, multi-site. And a lot of that is because we don't have a locking mechanism to basically say I'm applying updates to one site and this other site in the multi-site is still running. It's all the same code base, so we can't really, at this point, support updates in that manner. Um, you need Composer available where you're doing the automatic updates and you need rsync. Um, right now, rsync is not a requirement if you're running Windows, but that will um, change in the near future. Um, we tried to make a version for Windows without rsync, but basically, rsync is pretty good and it's really hard to duplicate that yourself. So we tried. <laughs> uh, 
Um, so when you're going through the UI, uh, when you first go to the update screen, it'll sort of tell you everything that it detects is wrong with your, um, with your site. And we really try to you know, load that at the very beginning so we don't want you to start the update process and then find out later, oh, you weren't really prepared to do this update. The other thing that we do is in your status report, we sort of tell you if we keep running the continuous ready, readiness checks so that if you say, okay, I want unattended updates, background updates, we wanna make sure like every time cron runs that we check to make you're sh sure you're still good to go because one, we don't know when a security update is going to happen and if you're relying on unattended updates, you don't want to find out at that point that your site somehow became not compatible with automatic updates. Um, so we try to, yeah, we detect as many problems as we can. Um, so for the attended updates, basically meaning the form, right now, um, this shows both patch and minor updates, so going to the next minor. Um, you have to set a config switch in your settings.php right now to support the minor updates. Um, and once you hit that, you sort of, we download your updates. This is what's really happening as we're running. We're copying your site over, we're applying the composer operation, and then we tell you, you know, what you're going to go to, you hit ready, and then hopefully, or continue, and then yay, you've updated core. Um, if you have problems at this state, if there are things that don't, that won't stop it, but we want to warn you about, we would tell you warnings here. Um, we would also look, at this case when we're updating core, we don't support module updates while you're updating core, so if for some reason the composer operation forced an update to an, a module, we would tell you, sorry, we can't proceed at this point and you have to update the module first. Um, this, so the automatic updates extensions is obviously for modules and themes, and we just give you a simple form, and basically the update that we recommend and allow you to update to is what the current update manager in Drupal core would recommend. Um, so similar thing to if you're updating core, except for we tell you, you know, where you came from, where you're going to, and then hopefully all of your contrib modules are up to date. Um, so warning for updating modules, um, you know, we provide a UI for updating via Composer. We don't do, we can't fix broken contrib updates. Um, we're hopefully in the future we can do more stuff like PHP stand review in your staged copy of your site. We're gonna, that's one of the projects I'm gonna suggest for contribution day. Um, but we really recommend doing these updates if you can in a development or local environment and then always backing up first, because if you have experience managing uh, Drupal sites, you know that sometimes your contrib project, for whatever reason, can break your site, maybe a conflict between two modules. So I don't want to give people the impression that we have solved that particular problem. You don't have to go to the command line you know, to do the update, but we're not fixing a broken update for a contrib project. Um, so the unattended updates, Right now we support security releases and uh, or all patch releases and uh, there's a setting to where you can choose what level you want. If a problem happens, so we detect a problem for some reason, we can't run the update, we'll send you an email. One thing that would say prevent you from doing an update in the, in the background is if database updates were had to run to run this update. Uh, so Drupal core tries not to have uh, database updates during patch releases, definitely not during security releases, but it's not an impossibility that it could happen during a patch release. So if we detect that, we'll email you and say, you have to go to the form to update this version of Drupal core. Um, and then they can either be done by a terminal command that we provide, a web request like going to system cron, or now it also works with automated cron. Um, so in the console command that we provide, so sort of a simple symphony console command. This is the most secure way to do it in that you can set up this console command to run uh, via a cron tab on your server to run as a user that is higher, that basically has permissions to write, to write to your code base and you can have the web server running as a user that doesn't have permissions to write to your code base. So that's the preferred way to set up 
um, the updates. It is a little bit harder and m most, it seems like most even sort of cheaper hosting do provide a way to, to run cron jobs. Um, but it really depends on your hosting how you would set this up. Um, I've had interest from people who are agencies that host a lot of either, maybe they host some sites on more Drupal specific hosting for their higher price, price clients, but then for some clients they host them themselves where they have more control. So this is one option if you want to do updates, if you host sites yourself, you can set up this automation to you know, ping against all, all of your sites and keep them up to date. Um, so in this case, it respects the setting that you have on your site, either all patch or security updates, and then you don't tell it a particular version, you just say basically, update me if I'm ready. Um, so that's via, and so via the web is the easiest setup, basically you just go to a form and say, update, you know, do background updates. Um, but the web server does need to be, have right access. Um, so this is sort of a balance between do you actually, practically, are you going to update your site for security updates? And if you aren't going to, unless it's done in the background, then this might be a good option. Um, so if things go wrong, anything that doesn't happen in the very last step, um, we basically won't do the update. But at the very last step where we copy your code over to your site, there is a possibility always that something can go wrong when you're copying files. We haven't, like I said, and since it's been stable, well actually we've never had a bug file where somebody said something happened in the last step and now my site is hosed. But it is possible that that could happen. So we put fail safes in that at least will detect that problem even though we can't absolutely for 100% sure prevent that problem. But in practicality, we've never had somebody say that that problem has happened. Um, you know, we're not gonna, we don't have the usage that hopefully someday in Drupal Core and Starshot we will have, but we're trying to do as much to prevent that, but just want you to, I guess to say, you know, make sure you either have, you have regular backups or if you are updating via the form that you back up right before you run that update. Um, so, uh, but we, again, we do as much as we can to check validation so that none of that will happen. And as far as we know, none, you know, we haven't had any problems like that. Um, and we, if you, if it is possible, we do recommend this way of running it via our command that we ship with the module. And there's documentation on there on how to set that up. Um, and this is just an example of what happens, the begin stage where we copy over to your stage copy, uh, run the composer, and then the warning sign at this point, you know, this is the point that is uh, the, the potential sort of copying files. If you say unplugged your server at that point, it would be bad. Um, what we don't do is we don't do rollbacks. You can't roll back from a particular update. Um, we don't do Git-based workflows, though, that would be possible via custom code. Um, on the contribution day tomorrow, I've sort of set up that as a potential problem somebody could work on, and I have a sort of boilerplate issue for that. And we don't do A-B testing as you can't do this in the staged copy of your site. It doesn't actually boot up. You can't see what the update would look like before you actually do the update. And we don't support major core updates, so you won't be able to use it from go to Drupal 10 to Drupal 11. Um, so the life cycle, we throw events at every point in the process. So create, require, apply, and destroy. Both actually, we got rid of the destroy events <laughs> because we do that later now. But besides that, uh, this slide is up to date. So basically, I'm gonna give an example of how we use the events. So internally in Package Manager, we have a validator called Pending Updates Validator. And basically the idea is that if you have pending database updates, you can't start the update process. Um, so we listen to the pre-create event. We, oh wait, that I jumped. Okay. Yeah, so pre-create, we flag an error if database updates exist and that prevents an update. So I'll get some code examples to see how this works in a sec. Uh, we have another validator called the lock file validator, and this one tries to avoid, basically, you can't stage the update 
and then do composer operations in your live site and then expect that to merge correctly. I mean, most people aren't doing composer operations on their live site. We may be if you install ours, but generally you don't want to do that um, outside of a really controlled environment like automatic updates. So in this one, we listen to the pre-require and pre-apply events um, and pre-create. At pre-create, we store a hash of your composer lock file and then at pre-require and pre-apply, basically right before running the composer operation and then right before applying to your site, we check to see if your composer lock file has been changed at all. If it has, then we, we can't go forward with the update. Um, let me show some examples. So this is an example, just a sort of silly example of how you might write custom code to integrate with um, automatic updates. So this is the peak time update preventer example custom module. So um, just a regular, oh, should be 10. But anyways, this is, you just require package manager in this case. This would prevent all operations, not just automatic up, update operations. Um, and I don't know if you can see, actually I have a closed version of this, a closer version. Um, so it's just an event subscriber service in Drupal. And then you, have, you listen to uh, pre-create and pre-apply, check if it's peak time, and then in the event, all of our events have add error and add warning. And if you add a warning, this will be shown in the UI, but it's not gonna stop the operation. If you add an error, then it's actually going to stop your operation. So we have the calculation, it's very small, but if you can see how we detect peak time, and then we detect peak time, and if it is, then you can't update your site. All right, this is another example of the Tedbo module preventer, silly custom module. And this is, I think I have a zoomed in version. Um, so basically what we do here, and this is sort of give an example of some other uh, utility classes that we have to help you out. Um, so every event has access to the stage, and the stage is basically the, th we wanna change the name of this, but is the thing that's managing the whole process. We're thinking about changing it to stage manager. Um, you can get the active composer, which basically means it's a composer inspector that will sort of inspect your live site. And then we get the stage composer, which is a composer inspector class that we have that will inspect your stage site. And then we basically can compare the two. Uh, so basically, tell me all the packages that are in stage that are not in active and then we loop through them all, and we say, okay, if any of them start with tedbo slash, then we say, sorry, you cannot install this package. So basically, there's always going to be, um, even if, if you update Drupal core, it's not gonna just up, update Drupal core. It's gonna up, often update um, dependencies in your vendor directory, and so this is some sort of classes that we give you to inspect not only what was updated as far as Drupal projects, but all of your composer projects. You can get the versions, you can get you know, what you had in the active and then what you have in the stage. And again, what you have in the stage is basically what you're going to have in live very soon unless you prevent the operation by adding an error. All right, so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the road to Drupal core. Um, so right now, I think I can announce this because it was announced yesterday uh, at the sort of round table about Starshot, is the Drupal Association said that the, basically uh, there is something called the update framework. And the update framework is a specification for providing safe updates. And it's not, it is uh, used on a lot of different systems. It's used on cars to provide uh, software updates to cars. Um, so we use this protocol and the, the, the Drupal.org Drupal infrastructure, the Drupal Association is providing the signing on Drupal.org and then we have libra PHP libraries on your client that basically communicate and say, hey, is this update, is this the actual files according to what they should be? Are, are the hashes of the downloads correct? And if they aren't, then we're like, okay, somebody's either hacking you or somebody's trying to hack Drupal.org and we're gonna prevent the updates. Um, so this is not in the contrib project. Um, so in the contrib project, you are sort of relying on your TLS chain. Um, so that is one thing you may want to consider. I th 
things are better than, than when we first started this project many years ago as far as like server configurations and the sort of safety of making those requests. But for Drupal core, this is going to be a requirement and I think it's the end of June they said it was gonna be done. So um, when it's done, then potentially we can turn it on also in the contrib module. We don't have to wait for core. Um, but that is one of one of the requirements for being in core. Um, so there's been a security audit of the update framework signing mechanism that is on Drupal.org. Like I said earlier, there's been an external security review of the module itself and our libraries that we use for the package signing on your client. And we're currently in the process of getting committer reviews. Um, and I personally, I think one of the best ways to help right now is to sort of run this. Basically, we need users for this. Um, and I think in the past, it's, you know, when I did this last year at Pittsburgh, it was like, please try this module. And yes, you'll be one of the first people to uh, use it, but I think you'll be safe. It'll be great. Uh, but <laughs> like I said, I feel like we have more confidence this year because we have actual users since um, we've had actual users since um, 2022. Since December, they've been using the latest version of the module, which has the background updates enabled. Um, we haven't had user bugs, and we had the security review. And the other thing is that the contrib module is basically we have a conversion script that turns it into the core uh, pull request, merge request, so that the actual code that you're running in the contrib module will be, um, for all intents, is the same code. I mean, obviously, we're getting reviews in core, and some stuff will change, but as of now, it is the same exact code that's in the core uh, pull request. So um, the more people we have using it now, uh, the more you know confidence we can have in the for future core version of this. Um, I think I sort of powered through the slides today. I have actually more I could I could go back on, but um, are there questions before I delve into some other stuff? How many people have never seen automatic updates before? How many people are using it currently? How many people are thinking about using it? Is there, I guess, can I get some feedback on, uh, I guess, why you're not using it now? Like, if you're thinking about using it, yeah. <laughs> Multi-site. Um, so multi-site, it is possible to, through custom code to just remove our multi-site validator. We, we don't do that because we don't know how you deploy stuff and what your multi-sites, how they are used. If you were confident or had a process to put all of your sites into maintenance mode, say, if you had a process to basically put all of your sites into maintenance mode before the update process, then it potentially would be safe to do it on any number of sites if they were all in maintenance mode. I don't think it'll ever be safe to, say if you have 50 sites running off the same code base, to update one and have 49 not be in maintenance mode while core gets updated. Um, you're, I mean, if you're okay, with those 49 sites, you know, being temporarily broken, you know, if you say you limited it via like, I forget, but there's cron modules where you can say only run automatic, you know, this particular cron job um, in the middle of the night, if you were okay with them being broken um, for say, I don't know, three to three minutes or something like that, then it would, I would say it would be safe. It's not 100% safe because, uh, yeah because your code is being changed, right? Yeah, yeah, nothing's 100% safe. Um, but yeah, yeah, if you have questions after that, but I mean, I know people have, basically we have a Drupal service, you could remove it, but it's sort of, we have it there for a purpose because we can't sort of detect what, why people are, you know, if the other sites are in maintenance mode or not.
Yeah. And it would be super safe to remove that validator during stage. Yeah. yeah. And we get an email after the update happens. So even, you know, if you had if you had something running on stage to do the automatic updates and it happens as whatever, you would get an email and said, okay, you know, this site has been updated, you could change that. You could check everything's okay and then deploy it. Another yep. Um, it, uh, you mean as far as like read only from the, from the web server's perspective? No, uh, sorry, maintenance mode. Maintenance mode? For a, automatic, for the unattended part, we put it in the maintenance mode. It's just not safe to, and that was one of the things that came from the security review, is I mean it's a pretty, it would be a pretty hard exploit to like figure out, okay, you know, these basically, if Drupal core is not running all the files that it thinks it's supposed to be running for one particular version of Drupal, then it's not, it's not one version of Drupal core and another, it's sort of in between state and we can't really say that's a secure version of Drupal. Um, so when you run the unattended, we put it in the maintenance mode. In the form, when you're running through the form, we pre-check the thing that says put in the maintenance mode. You could uncheck that, but we say that we strongly recommend that it's in there. But you, so you don't have to do that yourself and we take it out of maintenance mode when it's over. Um, I guess you could write custom code to prevent that, but I, I would not recommend that. Yeah, so um, that could definitely be used for site backups. I'm, um, one of the things I was gonna suggest also tomorrow in the contribution day, it, part of the contribution day tomorrow is um, I want people to look at, actually I'll bring this, oh no I can't, let me see. I'm gonna take off the mirroring for a second so I can actually change things. Unplug, and then plug it back in. Think that would work? <laughs> uh, how do you get the mirror? Oh yeah, mirror. Okay. Um, so yes, you can do backups. I did a sort of like very start to some code that would work with backup and migrate, if that's what you had, to basically right before you apply the update, um, call the backup and migrate service. Um, but you would need to set up backup and migrate and, and basically have custom code to say this is the uh, source, or what is it, destination? I don't know, there's like a source and destination for backup and migrate, and you could set that up automatically to run the update right before apply. I mean, you might, might want to run it before and after, so you have two backups right before the state, but yes, that's possible. Or, you know, basically anything you can trigger via um, PHP code, you could trigger to make your backup. Any other questions? Any re any other? I'm curious, the, the new details that you're doing this prior to the update, uh, yeah, you could. I mean, oftentimes, so actually, can you say it again? So in a testing environment with like uh, continuous integration, you were saying, could you fire the? Um, yeah, it would depend on, I guess it would depend on if you already have some way to update your site via continuous integration. Some of this would lose, you know, some of this would lose its value depending on, I wouldn't want you to like say, oh, I already have continuous integration to update my site, now I'm gonna replace it with automatic updates. But you could fire it you're saying basically, could you avoid having to do the backups in that case? Yeah. Yeah. Um, if somebody's going to look at it via, like, whatever you have to deploy from, say, staging to production, um, presumably at that point, if you already have backups, then yeah, you don't have to worry about us providing backups for you. Um, 
you could have it running the script that we provide, say, all the time or you know, on a certain amount of time in continuous integration and basically um, trigger the job, see if the composer uh, files were changed. If the composer files were changed, then you know there was an update provided by the system and then you could sort of deploy it to stage either automatically or trigger like a pull request if you have that in your continuous integration with reviews at that point. Um, it, may be some, it may be something that you could use instead of sort of advanced sort of, um, sorry, what was that again? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Any other questions or like things that are stopping you from, if we could do X, I would use automatic updates now. Yeah, so right now we don't basically, we don't take get into consideration. Um, config should not be getting updated in usually in patch releases, though I guess that's not for, for sure for Drupal core. Um, so either if you're relying on, if you want to run like the automatic updates, background updates on production, and you're using version control, then you're gonna be temporarily sort of out of sync. So one potential way to use it would be, I don't have time to be always ready to, to apply the security updates. I'm gonna let automatic updates do its thing, but then I'm actually going to, you know, do the update locally and push it there, or do, basically you'll have, you'll have to have a manual step, but this would get you the fact that, okay, if I can't actually do the update manually, I'm at least, on the latest security release of, of Drupal core, and then I, I will basically still have to take in vers version control into account afterwards. One of the other things I would, you know, have suggested for tomorrow is sort of the Git integration, and I have an issue for that in the automatic updates. That's what I was going to do before I switch displays. Yeah, so there's an automatic updates extras module, which is kind of like my idea is that we're gonna work on some experiments and contrib for this tomorrow during the contribution day and to sort of be a holding place for things that aren't on the, oh, what happened to it? Aren't on the short-term roadmap for core um, because getting just this into core is a lot and I don't want to say, well like, okay, we also are gonna have to have Git integrations before we get into core, so I'm gonna add Git integrations to the main contrib module. Yeah, so basically this will be sort of a holding place, sort of starting tomorrow, like let's think about backups, let's have solutions for Git. Um, basically any kind of, anything related to, to automatic updates that is not in the short, short term core path or that's just general sort of composer problems. Like one of the other suggestions I was gonna give for tomorrow was, I don't know if you notice when you say install web form and web form, even if you do it correctly via composer, if you look at some of the sub modules, they are not going to install their dependencies. Um, so even when we have project browser, the initial version of Project Browser is not necessarily going to look through all your sub-modules and install all the composer dependencies because they're technically not a composer dependency of the main project. Um, but with Package Manager with the Composer API, it would be very easy for us to just you know look at the project, look at the dependencies, and then install them for you. So that's one of the suggestions I had. Um, so that's sort of the kind of thing that I want Imagine living in there. Um, so I know the Git integration is basically a lot of people are like, that's the thing I need before I can actually use it. So that is something I, that I first want to tackle here. Any other? I have a question, this is yeah. like a viable use case. If um, I were to install this and fix split it out for something running on my QA server, which is yep. my production server, yep. it does its thing to do Drupal core, because that's all I already need to think about. Uh -huh.
Yeah, so for that, I mean, assuming you would probably either have to have um, some job running on your staging triggering our script because you couldn't rely on like automated cron because potentially nobody's hitting your staged environment. So that wouldn't trigger it. Yeah. Yeah, actually, we actually would recommend just hitting R, like not even cron. I mean, you might want to run cron, but just hit R script directly. Okay. It's a symphony command that comes with the module. It, there's no arguments to it. It's just basically like run my settings. For, if there's an update, apply it. And then you would want to check afterwards. Uh, well, you would get an email if the staging server can, see, can send emails. Or in the script, you could say, OK, you know, did my composer lock file change? If it changed and there was an update. Yeah. Any other questions? Any? Yes. Yeah, so basically, I mean, anything you can do from PHP, like the, the pre-apply or actually the post-apply event would be where you'd want to do it. And you just need to write a service that subscribes to that event and then we don't have any particular logic. I was, th was going to talk to the guy who does ECA because um, he was basically, my understanding is he just has to add a few lines to say subscribe to this event. So he could, or base, yeah, add a subscriber for our post-apply and then you could, you know, ECA, I'm sure, has a lot of integrations for, not for notification modules. So you could do it that way. Yeah. Any other? So I saw a lot of people raise hands about wanting to use automatic updates, but I didn't hear anybody using it. So there must be other reasons why you're not using it. And this, I can, I could add stuff to it. <laughs> or I could, yeah. 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 But you did mention that through the symbols, you don't need write access, but you would still need Somebody needs write access. Yeah. Yes, but the web server does not need write access. So it, it would work on something Yeah. Page. Yes. And it would not work yeah, it would not work on basically most of the currently Drupal focused sites. So a Drupal focused ho hosting platforms. I really wish you'd stop yeah. <laughs> 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 um but it is, you know, it is a, you know, I, I'm sort of one of the reasons why it's probably included for Starshot. It is, you know, it's sort of something that if you're not already sort of very Drupal focused, have continuous integration that is really sort of geared towards, at least right now, those sites. And we have the script that can do a lot that you could use your continuous integration in there. But if you're not using that, then yeah, the, um, it's, yeah. Yeah, something like DigitalOcean where you can do anything, yeah. So, I mean, my sort of thought, it's either sort of very sort of like simple or low cost sites or very sort of highly technical users who are agencies or are hosting a lot of the sites themselves and can set up the script and can set up the server users to be like, here's the web server user, they don't have right access. Here is the other user that's going to write the script and is actually going to perform the updates. So if you can do that, I, I don't want to say it's just for sort of sites that are simple cases. We do have the advanced, advanced use case. Yeah. It just takes a little bit more work for that. Yeah. Other questions? Other reasons why you're not current? I'm not calling people out, but why you're not currently using it. <laughs> yes, sorry. Yeah. Good, good. I'm glad you're here then. <laughs> yeah, it's the first time I've heard it's stable and ready to use. Yeah, yeah, it is stable and ready to use, and people are using it. Uh, I put it in my talk. Yeah, and if people are around tomorrow, if they're not, if they're at the contribution and you want help setting it up, um, and I think actually maybe in my slide I mentioned Drupal, you know, Drupal Slack, auto updates, you can ping me directly or just ask questions if you're having troubles installing it. Yep. Yeah, so basically, 
Yeah, so XGM, release manager for Drupal Core, asked in her role as release manager, have I thought about the upgrade process from the contrib module to uh, core? Um, yeah, so really there's, we have like very little config. Um, there are some settings, if we can't find your rsync, if we can't find your composer, then you set those in, um, in your settings.php usually, um, so we can easily migrate those. And then we have the setting for how, um, do, you, do you want all patch releases or do you want security releases? And that's pretty much all we have. Um, so those I think will be pretty easy to, go o to move over. If you're writing custom code, then you will potentially need to change your like namespaces of um, the contrib version versus the core version because they will have slightly different names. Um, but uh, one of the nice things I think will make it easier for people migrating from the contrib to the, to the core version, especially if you're not writing custom code, is after the composer operation happens, you can uninstall the module and you don't, like it's just a generic composer operation. There's nothing special that if you run automatic updates and then you decide you don't want to use it, your site is just still a valid composer project. Um, so besides the settings that we'll have to migrate, there's not, um, we don't have to think about how your site, the state of your composer project after the fact. Because it should work if, if you started with the contrib project, if you started with like other ways to update composer. So one of the reasons this is important is that we definitely don't want people who are early adopters with the contributed module to then run into problems when we put automatic updates into core, minor release comes out, you flip that clever little config switch that's there that allows you to do the minor update automatically, and then there's a namespace collision between the two projects, and Drupal, I, I always forget which one Drupal picks, and there's a whole situation there. Um, so having some sort of tool to automatically migrate the config to the core namespace would be fantastic. And we've also been discussing like breaking a lot of our policies because automatic updates is just such a critical feature for the ecosystem. So most um, experimental modules when they get put into core go through a very lengthy process of validation and so forth and only get added in new minor releases and we were talking about the, the, or the newest minor release of the newest major release. And we were talking about backporting it to a Drupal 10 minor. We were talking about, you know, would we put it in a patch release? What would we, you know, what lengths would we go to to get automatic updates out to the majority of Drupal users sooner? But this is something we need to take account is that there is a contributed project user base when that happens. So we need to make sure that transition is, is seamless, I think. Cool. Um, so I'll talk. Um, the, o the other very basic sort of thing that we did to make it easier when to go to when it gets into Drupal Core is it's not the exact same uh, project name. So I think there was a problem with Drupal slash Media when it came in that the actual name, as far as Composer, was exactly the same. Um, where the contrib version is, you know, Drupal slash Automatic underscore updates, and the core version will be Drupal slash Auto underscore updates. So. <laughs> very small. It's shorter too, so that's a, that's a bonus. But I'm sorry that in contrib you will have to use the long namespace, but that's, you know, that's your battle that you'll have to fight. Any other questions about use cases? About questions about the module? You will all go out and install it. How many people are hosting sites themselves, like have more control over the hosting? How many people are hosting like a Drupal sp specific hosting company? How many people are hosting sites not themselves but not Drupal specific hosting? All right, all right. Um, anything else? Okay, all right, thanks. Thanks for coming. I'll be around tomorrow if you have questions. If you
try to install it and you hit a roadblock, flag me down.